Hey everyone, I'm Kenny. I'm the founder of the modern resort wear brand, Kenny Flowers. And it just feels good to be here. Is everyone enjoying LA so far? If I knew it was gonna be 90s, I'd be in shorts and flip flops, but didn't know that. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about my story and basically take a look at how we have created a brand that brings vacation to our customers each and every day. What we do is make our customers feel better. We create products that set the tone for the type of day they want to have. And this all started back in 2015. I quit my corporate, you know, that cushy job in New York, booked a one-way ticket to Bali, Indonesia, and got on the ground to live out my dream of trying to create a better modern Hawaiian shirt. Once I got there, I quickly realized I have zero fashion experience, no business plan, and really no advice besides a blank slate for me to fill on how to do this. I had an iPhone note that basically said, you know, we gotta find some good fabrics, we gotta find a factory to make the shirts. Completely forgot about creating a logo for the brand in that first bit, but that's how you get started. So like I said, what led to starting this? I wanted to make sure that I was creating not just a product that could be a Hawaiian shirt on the market. I wanted to create something that was ideal for my customers and really think through everything from their perspective. I had $12,000 in the bank account, which really wasn't enough for me to sit around in an apartment, email factories, wait for samples, wait for years. And I just knew that by going there, showing up, and starting the business, it would be the best chance to succeed. Fast forward three months, and I found myself on a flight back with a couple hundred shirts in my bag. This is a little inside look at our inventory sales tracker back in 2015, tracking the sales made at a pool party at my friend's house in Santa Monica. Also over here was the online shipping side of things, where I was using their beer pong table, ping pong table, as um, you know, the warehouse to lay everything out before shipping. And all I can say really is, it's doable. You just have to get started. You'll learn more by getting started than you will by sitting around and planning. So if there's anything you take away, if there's any idea you're thinking about, you got to get out there and start testing it, talking to customers, figuring out what they want, and creating the best product you can for them. And that really leads to what I think was the most important part to our early success and our continued success to date. And that's understanding your customer. And I say that because, I mean, you are thinking about your business 24-7. It is your baby, it is what is on your mind, but the reality is your customer probably is not. So you have to take every advantage of every moment that you get with them, because it's special. Reality is they're just not thinking about you the way you're thinking about them. Just like when I met my wife in college, I was thinking about her a little bit more than she was thinking of me at the time. But that really leads to how you interact with your customers. It helps you realize, okay, they might not be paying attention to me at all times, but how do I make sure any time that they're thinking about Kenny Flowers, that they're thinking about anything associated with our brand or in your, cust you know, in your brand, that you're there for them. And you wanna design that experience and be a part of creating that for them. So in the beginning, I was not creating a shirt for the sake of making a Hawaiian shirt. I had no interest in being a fashion designer at any stage of my life. But what I was interested in was creating something that was really designed for, at the time, guys like me, ones that were on the rise, working their corporate jobs, grinding hard, you know, literally trying to like get to that next stage, but also wanting to celebrate along the way. It was the hardest thing for me to do is to see that there were friends of mine that were working so hard and not taking a chance to enjoy their 20s. So I really set out to not just create a Hawaiian shirt, but I wanted to create a shirt that could really help those people get out of just that job first mentality and start creating the lifestyle that they want. And this is where things start to get really exciting because while it started as you know, a brand for men, it was men's shirts and then swim trunks, 
I continued to listen to my customer and the customer and potential customers were females in that audience saying, what the heck, love the boyfriend fit shirt, but wear something for me. And that's where luckily my now wife came along because we were able to build out a line for women. And for her as the head of women's, she was able to dive in and make bikinis because frankly, no one wants to buy a bikini that I design. Um, she's over there in the audience with our baby. She'd usually be on stage with me for something like this. Um, the next slide is literally just pure Harrison, four month old appreciation, rocking as Kenny Flowers from birth. Um, you know, baby bloomers in the, in the works here because the brand has evolved with us as we've grown. Um, you know, into the next stages of our life. And that leads to a really important part that's not just, you know, within our lives, but really our business. And that's all about building relationships from the beginning with your customers, with your factories, with everyone you want to work with. Because really, end of the day, we're humans, and this is made to be, you know, a fun, gratifying journey that we're all on. For me, it's really, it's never been about the money. There's so many times where I've sat there and I'm just like, I'm just not motivated by the money, but really the impact and now the amplified impact that we can have as a brand around the world. I showed a couple pictures here of our factories. This is uh, Bali, Indonesia, main man Gog. He created the first ever sample and still to date, he's making our shirts. When we started, he took a chance on me as a guy wanting to maybe order 20, 30 shirts at a time because he felt strongly about what we could do. His boutique factory had eight people working there. And now together we've been able to build that into a 50, 60 person thing, creating jobs over there, even through COVID times when tourism was just taken away. Um, so these are really the things that get me excited and working. This is a picture of us in Colombia too, where we work with a female run factory, where it's literally mothers working as the, um, you know, as the breadwinners in the family to help bring our products to life that people get to rock every day around the world. And we're here to talk a lot about these touch points with our customers. And I think this is one of the most valuable things that Kenny Flowers has championed as a brand and that you should consider in your customer journey. And that's, that the customer does not stop. This journey does not stop when they add to cart, when they click buy. That's really when this journey begins. And it's up to you to make that memorable, make it fun, make it something they want to talk about, give them the social capital to go on and get excited about what you're doing instead of anywhere else. Earlier today, we heard a lot about storytelling and the importance of bringing your customers along for the ride. And this is that continued journey that we're trying to take them on here. We've had a very community-based emotional connection to the brand. And when I say that, I'm talking about customers getting excited when they see someone else wearing Kenny Flowers at a resort they're at, at the bar that they're going to in New York. And we have done everything we can to continue to enable this and champion it. And for us, we, make, we design our collections, we base them off destinations, experiences that we've had and that we want to have, that we want our customers to have. And by going deep into this, for example, like an Amalfi collection that my wife and I, um, you know, we went there for our honeymoon, we found that we're not just inspiring people to go to places, but we're giving them something to connect to. We can all think about a specific, you know, product or experience we've had that reminds of, us of our mom, of our dad, of a special someone, of a trip that we took. And for me, the whole inspiration behind Kenny Flowers was that I loved wearing my dad's hand-me-down Hawaiian shirts and being able to create products that even on a cold, snowy day in Chicago, you can look in your closet and see something that reminds you of your trip to the Caribbean, of your first you know, international adventure. That's what really gets us um, excited. So we really make it you know, a part to not just set our customers up, but we're really a part of it. Like we're there with them to help them celebrate those big moments. And you know, there's a lot of talk obviously about like, you know, are you business centric? Are you customer first? And for us, our team really aims to go beyond just being customer first. We essentially like want to be the customer. And what I mean is we're thinking through this from their perspective. 
Slide's called Meet Joe. Couldn't find a good picture of Joe, but he's our customer success all-star. And we had a team retreat in, um, in Miami last year, and we were going around. We have a fully remote team, so it's really rare to get everybody together. And I want everyone to understand what they're doing for the business, because not everybody knows what's going on in every department, every area in a given day. And when Joe got up to speak, he said something really interesting. He said, basically, my job is to go on 10 bachelorette parties, three bachelor parties, a few destination weddings, a couple honeymoons, into the bar with some of the guys every day. And I was like, I mean, what, what do you mean? What type of job is that? He's like, I literally put myself in the customer's shoe. When there is a bride reaching out, wondering when her package is going to get there because of the flight, I emphasize with that customer. I put them in that mindset because that allows him to give them the best experience they can or that he can. So for us, like I said here, it's like it's all about emphasizing with the customer, getting excited with them, and then ensuring that that customer has everything that they want from us. So what you wish your customer remembered versus what they actually do. I think this is a really important point and something I brought up a little bit earlier. But the bottom line is your customers just don't remember everything you do. Some of my best friends have no idea somehow still that we launched our golf country club line a year and a half ago. They say, dude, you should make some golf shirts. I'm like, well, I mean, I sent an email about it. Did you not get that? Um, so I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind, but that doesn't mean they're ignorant. It means they're out there living their lives and doing their thing. So knowing like, you know, customers don't remember everything you do, but they do remember what they did with your product, or in our case, wearing Kenny flowers in the times that they had in that way. And, you know, I put a few, anyone recognize some of these faces? I've got Jimmy Buffett. Uh, this is Gail King at brunch in Brooklyn. Uh, that's like Oprah's bestie. And then Young Gravy, who's like this swanky rapper guy right now who loves rocking our shirts. And I bring this up because it's amazing what's actually memorable to your customers in a given year. Sometimes it's the fact that my wife posted an Instagram about me not being able to, you know, get my bag under 50 pounds and having to pull Hawaiian shirts and you know, tie them to my backpack to be able to get on a flight. Other times it's that Jimmy Buffett wore our shirts on tour all summer. So with you and your company, it's really about thinking through what are some of these key moments that you can do and emphasize them. And also know that if something really resonated with your customer or customer base, a year from now, if you're a growing company, you're going to have 70, 80% of customers that weren't around for that time. And knowing that they would be probably just as excited to know that when they go on vacation, they're basically wearing what Jimmy Buffett wears in Margaritaville. And this is really, to me, a really important question to ask. It's not the first time anyone's ever said, you know, what do your customers want? But I'm not talking about products. I'm really talking about the experience. And not just customer success, but really what they get from your brand in a given time. Does your customer want to get a quick answer? Do they want to talk on the phone? Do they want to just lash out at somebody because they're having a bad day and you can be there to turn it around? You have to know exactly what your customer wants and make sure that you're there to give them that. For us, we know that our customers want a friendly experience. They want to feel like they have their own customer concierge feeling and that they're really getting set up and having extra VIP service along the way, so we deliver that. Your business changes all the time. Every year, Kenny Flowers is a different business. The first year we were in operation, I was in Bali for nine months of that year, working on creating the best product I could. Luckily, I had friends back home that were our marketing and sales force. They were wearing the shirts out to every spot that they went over the summer and just talking about them and telling people about their friend that's in Bali making these shirts. And that was really special, but not something sustainable. Years later, you have more that you have to be able to do as a company. Even like if you think about our warehousing, we had my mom shipping shirts out of 
my room from growing up, shelves stacked with a few different sizes and designs, and eventually I got a call from her saying, you know what, this isn't just a me helping you anymore, this has taken over my days, it's time to get to 3PL like shit, Bob. Um, so that was exciting, and you have to be able to really create the best business you can so that you can deliver to your customers. If customers aren't getting their shipments for a week because it's backed up at the you know, house or warehouse, that, that can cause issues. So it's really about just evolving with it and making sure that you're setting up um, that. And while I say that the business changes, I think the essence of your brand needs to scale with it. For us, since the beginning, people knew if they reached out, they were gonna talk to someone that really, really cared about them in making sure that they were set up with KF. So in the beginning, we had like zero returns, only people complimenting shirts. There was nothing going on because it was my friends. And they're like, I don't wanna email Kenny and you know, tell him I wanna maybe send a shirt back or something. But over the years, we've really built that out. And then it was my family getting involved and helping. And eventually our top customers turned into our employees and we're the ones dealing and talking with our customers every day, which is something that we were, are now able to scale. And like I said, uh, you know, I just said this, but basically setting yourself up to succeed as you scale is only a benefit to the customer itself. So really thinking about things explicitly as, hey, we're customer first, can end up backfiring if you're not doing the right things with your business to create the right experience. And I think a good example about keeping a consistent brand for us was really during the COVID times. I mean, we literally had to ask ourselves that question, like, what do you do as a vacation brand when no one can go on vacation? And that really, you know, that was a challenge. There's no time to figure this out, but we had to figure out what do we do? How are we? We had marketing emails ready to send out saying, hey, go on spring break with 10 of your friends and be within a six foot radius of each other and have fun. And we had to not send those. Um, but it really brought us back to the drawing board and realizing that it's not for us, the customer experience isn't just about sending people off on vacation, but really how can we bring vacation to our customers? And yes, everything changed, the landscape, what people were able to do. But the reality is our brand didn't. It only strengthened during that time and set it up where we realized, hey, whether it's good times or bad, we're here to brighten someone's day. We're here to help them escape, help them feel better, whether it's putting on the product or just knowing if they send an email with a question, they're gonna get a friendly response, not something too automated. And turn in there, I'm happy to open this up to, to Q&A and just see what anybody has questions on. Oh yeah, you wanna do it this way. Uh, well, I'm Jacob, uh, big, big fan. I'm gonna be a new customer, so I can't wait to wear one. Um, have, uh, what have been some of the challenges you guys grow in like keeping that personal touch? Because I feel like I, I think a lot of brands and whoever's from a brand side here probably sees that as like as you grow as a bigger company and you have more customers and more orders and more issues, it's it's harder to keep that personal touch. Like, what maybe what are some of the tips or what are some of the challenges and what are you going to do over the next couple of years? Oh, perfect. That's a great question. So you're asking basically what are the challenges as we grow? How do we keep that consistent service? And I think the best thing you can do is champion people that are gonna care about it deeply every day. We, I mean, I'm not plugging Gorgeous, but we do use them and it helps so, so much because anyone new at our company can easily see exactly how we're responding. And by catching patterns, trends, ways that people are reaching out, what they're running into, that ends up helping us solve and get ahead of it. Because our customer success team, like, they're not just responding to customers, they're informing the rest of our team what products we should be making, what's going on in a general area of the US and how we can respond or be a part of that. Um, so I would say for us, ch challenges we've had, we're definitely going from you know, having one person that was basically responsible to all to how do we make sure that our customers 
you know, they can get the fast responses, but they don't rely on us every second of the day. Because we did make the decision, let's make sure that we have, you know, real people responding um, versus not. And a big thing that we did was really turn around, say, not being able to have night hours or weekend hours available into, hey, we're, you know, it's the weekend. We hope you have an amazing one. We're going to get to you first thing Monday morning because we're out having a good time and hope you do too. And being able to, for us, just turn that around and set it up where it goes from, oh, wait, like maybe they're not available to getting it there. And over time, we've actually improved our like response time to customers to like under an hour on average right now. Um, so, so there's definitely ways as you, as you grow. If you're a seasonal business too, it's really important to make sure you're staffed properly for high season, but also give people opportunity to get involved with other areas of the business while, um, you know, while it's like a slower time. Cool. Uh, any other questions, guys? Yes. Hold on. <laughs> Come over there. <laughs> Hi, Kenny, thank you. Hi. Can you talk about your process of building your team? Mm -hmm. You know, going from starting out in your friend's house to scaling to where you are now. Specifically, who was your first hire? Who was your second hire? And would you do those hires again in that order? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And it's one of those things I have learned as I go. Um, I would say, you know, when you're, when you're starting out, no one's gonna care about the business as much as you do. And you have to be able to acknowledge that, but you do have to find people that are passionate about helping in any way possible in a given day, especially in the beginning. So I would say those first couple hires, it really needs to be focused on people that are willing to hustle, willing to do multiple jobs, be flexible. And as your team starts to grow, like right now we're, 12 to 15, depending on how you count some of our like main contractors, it really changes from wanting, you know, what I'd call generalists, people that are, you know, smart, passionate about the brand, but can help wherever needed, into specialists that can really help you get after an area that either you have a weakness in or you see a huge opportunity and need extra people fully devoted to it. Cool. Thanks, Kenny. Uh, one more question. I think we probably have time for one more. Thank you. Hey, Kenny. What's up? I was, uh, I found your guys' website probably four or five years ago, or maybe it was three years ago, so I've been a awesome. fan of the shirts when you guys first came out, so. Love to hear um, it. As you said that you were, uh, like, customers are s super important. You're putting yourself as a customer. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know that you guys kind of launched the golf launch as well so um, when you think of it as a customer are you putting yourself as a customer when you're going after are you looking for trends or how are you kind of coming mm -hmm. out with new products and what's your process behind either searching for trends or is it you're just listening to the customers getting the feedback in that standpoint exactly I mean I would say that that is the essence of our business is actually being one with the customer like we are the customer the first round of shirts that we made I was like, the designs that we were putting out, I didn't just have a like, oh, that looks good, I would wear that. I was like, this type of guy would wear it to this day event, or this is the perfect shirt to wear out at night in New York or in LA. And I was really thinking in my mind through those things. And I think by doing that, it gave more intention, it gave more direction to customers of what they can do with the given product. And still to date, I mean, it is like, you know, as we've grown, I really love some of the small business aspects that we have. And we are still a very small business on a lifelong journey to become like, you know, a business that is like there for generations. But when it comes to like trends, it's like, we, I wouldn't say we're as much in the game of like seeing what's out there and then adjusting. We more just kind of like take some educated risks. Um, a really fun example of that is we had a leopard print shirt sample, this was like five years ago, called the Paradise, and it was a sample, I tried it on, I was like, yeah, no, that's not me, I can't pull this off. My wife back there, she threw it on, tied it up all cute, we went out in Bali that night, 
she put something in her story, and like 12 people were like, oh my God, is that a Kenny Flowers shirt? Is that going to be out? We're like, well, guess we should make this one. It went on to be a bestseller for years to come, and we've had like multiple celebs rocking it as well. So we definitely, um, you know, I, I would say we try to get a, ahead of trends and, um, and just take chances. And then with that said, we are always, you know, aware of basically what our customer's asking for. We didn't just make golf shirts because of that. We were literally saying, why can I not wear your shirts on a golf course right now? Um, and similarly with women's, our like hottest growing area right now is like dresses. And that is because we were told before launching it from customers, can I get these fabrics in dress form? And the second that we started really channeling that is when we started growing um, in you know, smart ways. Cool. Wow, great questions. Thanks, guys. Um, thanks, Kenny. Let's give a round of applause. Awesome stuff. Right, Founder stories, man. Those are like the best kind. Thanks, Kenny.